Hi friends, Alex Kais here and welcome to November. I've been a homeowner and investor in the Seattle area for about six years now. And let me tell you, it's been a journey. Over this last summer and early fall, there were a lot of people out there, including me, who said that interest rates are still at a historically low rate. So you should get out there and buy something ASAP. And really, I was trying to encourage people to consider historical trends and not just fixate on the eye-poppingly low rates during the COVID times. I mean, in the early 1980s, interest rates were close to 16 to 20%. So back in August, when a lot of my clients were getting quoted 5% interest rates, I was definitely encouraging them to get out and buy something ASAP. Today, when my clients are getting quoted closer to seven and sometimes 8%, I'm slower to throw out this uh, rates are historically low uh, little bit because I would say that that rate, when you consider the uh, the high cost of Seattle housing, uh, those rates are pretty comparable to what we've seen in the past 30 years. So I understand why buyers are uh, letting off the gas a little bit and the real estate market's definitely slowing down some. Understanding the real estate market is all about economics. And while I do find it interesting, that's not why I became a realtor. I love this industry because I get to help people during major life transitions. New jobs, new family situations, new cities. More often than not, at least in my career, all of these transitions have been largely positive and that makes my job a lot of fun. My point is that people still need to buy and sell housing because life happens. I was watching this YouTube video recently about the real estate market and one comment uh, just kind of stood out to me. Pessimists sound smart, optimists make money. I mean, I bought a house this past year, about six or seven months ago, and the value has already gone down by quite a bit. But I didn't buy it for short-term games. It was more about that long-term appreciation and just to have a place for family and friends to, uh, to go and relax. So if you need to, or you just want to buy something right now, make sure that you're consulting professionals and looking at your individualized financial situations. And then talk to me about creative ways that we can mitigate uh, some of those risks and some of those expenses. And we are going to talk about all of that in a moment. But first, today is my daughter's first birthday. So it's an exciting day. We're gonna start with a celebratory breakfast and then Kendall and I are gonna go out into the field and explore some interesting and fun housing options. I really wanted to come look at this place. We're on the Montlake Cut, which if you're not familiar, that's the, uh, the bit of water that goes by the University of Washington. I'm always on the hunt for like a cool house flip, and this one definitely fits the bill. Uh, there's not a ton of space here, but it's this almost historic-like Spanish villa type building, and it's very cool. My favorite thing is the tile in the dining room. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't extend throughout the whole house, but if I were to renovate, I would definitely try to match this and put it everywhere. The stuff in the living room is just kind of this generic square tile, which I'm not in love with. Very cool wood beams here, a lot of curves, uh, you know, arched doorways, uh, like glass bottle windows. The kitchen, uh, while it is very cool, um, it probably unfortunately needs to be redone. But I was just kind of looking at it and thinking, oh, 
how could you save this little like built-in cabinet? It's really pretty, but it's all surrounded by tile. It's not up to like modern height standards. Um, it's just very custom and specific to the house. You know I love a sunken living room. The front door's right here. We've got a cool half door there with a nice little entryway. I love this little nook right here. I actually have two little nooks. Uh, there's still a phone line. There used to be a phone here. Very nice. Put your family photo right there. Uh, didn't even notice this until right now. Uh, laundry chute. Very cute. Uh, more awesome tile. I like this. A nook. A nook. Here's one of the bedrooms. It's a great size. It's actually very large and um, really cool window placements. They're all pretty small, but uh, some of them are leaded and then some of them are just placed very beautifully. Okay, this place is a little bit more realistic for the first time home buyer. This is a nice little townhouse in the heart of East Lake. It's priced at about $650,000. And there's a loft bedroom right up there and then like a uh, another, I would call it an office space downstairs. Um, I really like this. I think it's super cool. Now I'm really curious to reach out to my favorite lender and ask how much this place would cost per month. I, I want to share some really accurate numbers. Um, I've helped a couple people recently who have done rate buy down options where the seller pays a lump sum, um, usually about fifteen to thirty thousand dollars in order to buy down your rate for one to three years. Uh, the idea being that uh, you know you get a temporary buy down and then when rates go back down, hopefully they do in the next year or two, then you can just refinance. Uh, so it's a good option for uh, kind of a like a band-aid on these high interest rate. Oh look at that view. It's it's, so cool. it's actually very cool. It's really cool. There's gas works right there. You can see the boats. You can see the Aurora Bridge. I really, this is really cool. It's just unique. It's a really unique, I mean, it's like a quintessential Seattle site, but I've never seen it from this angle. It's like a industrial spiral staircase. a little second living area. You could use it as a bedroom, guest room, TV room. And there is a closet down here, so you could put more clothes down here, so. Tiny, but nice to have. You know, you have an office down here, you sleep in the loft. Uh, there are no bedroom doors anywhere. That's true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's very stylish and a very efficient use of space. That's for you. That's for you. Good morning. It's the next day and uh, we're throwing this ridiculously large birthday party for Celie. And uh, Joanna spent all night putting together this birthday balloon arch. I think it'll be fun, but um, we accidentally invited too many people and they all said that they were coming. So now we're gonna have this giant first birthday party. Oh well, I think it'll be fun. I did hear back from Julie, my favorite lender, and I wanted to kind of show this like quick scenario on that townhouse. Here's what she had to say. She sent this 
loan breakdown scenario. I'm just gonna read it really quick. Purchase price was 655,000 and if the seller pays $27,000 at closing, you can get this temporary buy down for three years. Uh, the first year, your rate would go down three percentage points and your payment would be uh, $2,900. The second year, it would go down two percentage points and your payment would be $3,300. And the third year, your rate would go down one percentage point, a $3,700 payment. And then after that, uh, for the next 30 years, it would be $4,100. For an 800 square foot townhouse is uh, a little steep, but ideally that would give you three years to wait for interest rates to go down and then you could refinance after that. This video is like 12 minutes long and I haven't pulled any graphs. Let's have a look at the computer. Okay, uh, I don't think the black on black is gonna work. Let me change my... Okay, I'm still wearing pajamas because it is early Saturday morning. Uh, this is the multiple listing service and we have uh, the stats section pulled up here. We're gonna draw a circle around the uh, greater Seattle area. That includes like Linwood, Redmond, Bellevue, Burien. Let's start with the median sales price. And I think this one's been pretty interesting. We're just looking at single family homes here. and. You can see here that we had a crazy spring and summer. This is January up through about April. We saw almost $300,000 price increase and it's gone down for sure. That's what happens every year. This last month was the first month that we saw an actual increase in price. We're seeing people got kind of fed up with the, the competition over this last year as well as rising interest rates, but um, possibly people are starting to jump back in because of these buy down programs because there's uh, a lot less competition and the market's starting to pick up just a tiny bit um, or at least not in free fall. Let's look at the number of houses sold versus the number that are available. Um, this is a good indicator of supply and demand for the region. So we can see that there's still a big gap. Uh, around that same time, April, May, we saw there being more supply than there is demand. That makes it a healthy market. The uh, number of buyers out there has been going down steadily. Uh, again, pretty typical for this time of year and pretty typical for the interest rates going down. We're just seeing buyers step out of the, uh, the home search. Okay, months of inventory, if you remember, is a metric that looks at uh, how many houses are available and how long it would take to sell all of those houses, assuming that um, nothing new hit the market. This is five years worth of data. The past couple of years, it's just been going down, down, down. This means that what's on the market is moving very quickly. We're still not as high as 2018, which was the last housing crash that nobody talked about. This is good for home buyers. I would argue that um, it's good for home sellers too. If you sell your house, you still have to buy something. So uh, it's nice to see a balanced market that is just slowly appreciating. Um, that's better for everybody. I think that's it for this month. To summarize everything, ignore the headlines. We're not in a housing crash. We're just seeing it stabilize and balance out to what it's been historically. So this is a good thing for everybody. It opens up a lot more flexibilities. You don't have to waive all contingencies. There's a lot more uh, interesting financing options out there. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about making a home in Seattle, send me a message and we'll talk more in detail. Bye.